Out of Kennedy Space Center, the highly anticipated launch of NASA's Artemis 1 mission has been scrubbed. Here's a live look at the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center. As far as we know, Orion is still on the launch pad as NASA engineers gather data. Orion was ready to take off this morning, headed for the moon, but a crack in the inner tank and a hydrogen leak led to delays. Then this scrub. ABC's Morgan Norwood is at the Kennedy Space Center for us with former NASA astronaut Katie Coleman. So let's start with you, Morgan. What are NASA engineers saying or looking to gain from this data they're collecting? Yeah, you know, after a series, a cascade of, you know, series of issues here on the launch pad with SLS right behind it, right, right behind me, you can see it there. Uh, you know, basically, they're just trying to figure out what the main issue is within the past couple of hours or so. We know that it was an engine issue that ultimately caused this uh, launch to scrub. And so from here on out, from here, maybe until <laughs> Friday, which is the next launch window, they'll be just trying to figure out and make sure that that is the next window that which they can bring uh, the rocket up to space. And Katie, you just let me know if that's if that's correct you know how this process is going to be working exactly here. no that sounds just right I mean there there's four main engines and these are these are actually the engines we used on the shuttle and in fact I think that one of them was used on one of my shuttle missions which is pretty cool to me anyways okay. um, but so we know the shuttle main engines well um, and one of the things that you might see before a shuttle launch is you see that kind of little sparklers underneath you think you're actually lighting the engine but actually it's burning up the excess hydrogen and that's the capability where they were like hey when we do that when it's right at launch time will it be ready and one of those engines didn't react well didn't show the pressures they expected and so that's the troubleshooting that they need to do and they'll figure out in the next few days you know can they make the next window it's a complicated equation but it's going to be an amazing mission and this is a test flight yes. you know, yeah Katie, you know you mentioned you, a good point because we heard bill nelson's oh i'm sorry Morna, i didn't mean to step on you I was going to say, Katie, actually on that note, uh, what you just mentioned, in your experience, are delays like this common with launches of this magnitude? Because you explained there's a lot of components to this. Um, and so is this something that NASA was expecting, perhaps? Well, it is, a, it is a test flight. And when you say these kinds of launches, we have not done something like this in 50 years. It's really a long time and you know what you think of as Apollo now we've really updated so many of those things and you know it's new I mean it may be we may be going to the same place just like when they say why well, go back to the moon well we go to work every day sure. and we go back to work but we go because we've still got really important work to do and that's what this program is about but the first launch this one it is a test mission and really they're finding out so much about what it will what the environment out in space will be like for the rocket, for the instruments, all those things that you know could fail, but also for people. We've got like mannequins and dummies, so to speak, on there, all instrumented to understand the radiation. Yeah. I mean, before you and I actually sign up and say, yes, we will go, sure. Morgan, <laughs> I mean, this is the flight we want. and. It's a hard flight, right. and that's why we got to wait till everything is right. Yeah, I actually want to read a quote from Bill Nelson. I mean, he said that this is just simply a part of the space business, and it is a test flight, as you've been, as we've been stressing, you know, uh, testing this rocket and a spacecraft in a way that you won't get an opportunity to do when the actual mission, Artemis II, goes up. This is kind of the outcome that you, I mean, it's not the outcome that you want, but it is the best case scenario, because this, it sounds like this is not something that you would want uh, on Friday or, you know, even the next time around for Artemis II. Well, and, and when I hear something like, you know, th things that happen today, I actually think of the people that I know are already working on these things. I mean, these rockets, th they may not have people on them, yeah. but they are certainly, you know, built by people, tested by people, designed by people. Absolutely. And this team is going to make us make the, make us a rocket that gets us to the moon. Absolutely. It's just hard. Yeah. And Katie mentioned that there are no people on this rocket. This is a test flight, uh, but this is in preparation to actually have uh, astronauts on a, uh, on the next mission to the moon. And I also want to mention, um, if you can touch on, NASA has plans to uh, put the first person of color and uh, the first woman on the moon. As a female astronaut, can you tell me what that means to you? Well, women are 50% of the population and they're a large percentage of the population working at, at on NASA. Morgan and I were talking yes. about this and how important it is to actually have the people who go be representative of the people that live here on planet Earth. <laughs> yes. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And, you know, I don't know with our history of, you know, more like one kind of person in the in the space uh, organization. 
I, I know that when I saw, you know, for example, Wally Funk, who waited, you know, since the uh, the Mercury days to fly, when she flew in space, I cried. I mean, oh. but it also it just means so much to so many. Right. So when we go, we're going with everybody, and yeah. I think that's the right thing. Absolutely, and for so many girls and people of color that are watching this from home, it, it means representation. I mean, it, it means that the people that are going in space not only match what is happening here on Earth, as you mentioned, but also the workforce at NASA, the workforce of so many people and the women in STEM, people of color that are building these rockets and working on all the solutions and systems to make sure that this mission goes up. It means so much to them as well. Absolutely, and I think if you if you know go to the NASA website, you'll see a lot about this. Um, I love that the new the newer astronaut classes are more representative, and you know I just when you when I look at that group, I'm like this is a group that can solve problems and put puzzles together, and it's the same with the folks that are designing, maintaining, testing the rockets. You both and that is the group that you want in space. <laughs> and you both make it's very true. great we points. We can try them. Yeah, uh, let's do it. <laughs> Morgan, you have been staying on top of these developments for us all morning. Thank you. And Katie, thank you as well. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.